Hello and welcome to our video number four in SEMA F3. Uh, please be reminded that, as always, the recording is based on the express notes available at www.theexpgroup.com. Now, this video will be devoted to the issue of cost of debt and weighted average cost of capital. We will start from the cost of debt. And in the express notes, we're on page 31. And as you will see there, the cost of debt will, similarly to the dividend discount model, the cost of debt will be the discount rate that discounts interest rate interest payments to the price of debt in the market now. Interest rate and finally the nominal must be repaid and all those repayments discounted should give us right now the market price. Now that discount rate is what we're looking for. That's the effective cost of debt now. That is the interest that the market would charge if we wanted new debt now. One thing that is inevitably linked to the cost of debt is the impact of taxation. What we said just a second ago, um, the cost of debt that we calculated is the cost from the perspective of debt providers. That is the interest that they would charge us if we wanted new loans. Now, for us, there are some good news. Interest is tax deductible. So even though the debt providers would charge us interest at the amount of KD, we would take off tax from nominal interest that we would pay. Therefore, let's look at the example. The company issues debt with a nominal value of $100 million and that debt will pay an infinite interest at the rate of 4%. Right now, the debt is traded at 95% of its nominal value. Now, if we wanted to calculate the cost of debt, that would be just 4 divided by the market value, which means Right now, the cost of debt is for 421. But that is from the perspective of the debt provider. We would actually deduct tax, or we would treat the four of nominal interest as a tax deductible expense. So, from our perspective, actually, the cost of debt would only be 65% of that four, leading to the actual cost of debt for us as 274. Now that was about the cost of debt. Now let's look at weighted average cost of capital. Weighted average cost of capital is the discount rate that is being used in the assessment of the viability of projects. Where we calculate NPV, the project's cash flows will be discounted using the weighted average cost of capital in most cases. So what is it? Weighted average cost of capital, as the name suggests, is just the cost of equity, which we learned to calculate in the previous video, and the nominal cost of debt reduced by tax 
and both of these weighted by debt to equity ratio so as you see this is how much equity we have in the balance sheet and that is how much debt we have in the balance sheet all right and this weighing is applied to cost of debt while this one is applied to cost of equity nothing simpler than that because the model is simple what you should be aware of is the problems with this model rather than the model itself well you, sh you have to remember the model but the problems are also important so normally we will use weighted average cost of capital as the discount rate for the assessments of NPVs, IRRs and so on that will be weighted average cost of capital now when we can and when we cannot use that model first of all the project must be incremental to the existing company meaning there can be no trade-off it's not like we're doing something and because of that we have to stop doing something else or these types of things now it's good to be incremental a new project in the company we cannot use it to assist the existing projects either now the weighted average cost of capital reflects the targeted capital structure of the company so basically we assume that the financial risk is not altered what it means is that when we say in the calculation of weighted average cost of capital that there was 50 percent equity and 50 percent debt the project will be financed in the same way because if not if the project is all equity financed then the resulting capital structure will change because of the project and therefore weighted average cost of capital should be calculated differently or actually in this case the discount rate for the project should be calculated differently so we use weighted average cost of capital only when the project will be financed in exactly the same capital structure as the company is financed now the next thing is the next assumption for the use of weighted average cost of capital as a discount rate is that business risk is not altered this is important because if the business risk is altered look what changes is beta changes so cost of equity changes if business risk is altered cost of debt may change everything may change if business risk is altered so actually weighted average cost of capital as a discount rate is only useful in situations where a new project is just the extension of the existing company's activities in all other cases if the company invests in, in a completely different activity weighted average cost of capital should not be used because business risk is changed now if we have investments with a totally new source of funding the relevant discount rate would be the marginal cost of the new capital so if we have a new project that will be all debt finance the relevant discount rate for the project is just the incremental borrowing rate the rate at which we will get the finance so weighted average cost of capital is the concept that combines cost of equity and cost of debt it produces the discount rate which we will very often use in the calculation of NPV however you should bear in mind that you can only use weighted average cost of capital as a discount rate if those conditions are met.